I didn't plan on making a vlog today, but I gotta tell you uh, about something that happened last night. Uh, last night about 7.30, I'm on the computer, I'm working on a puzzle for Kyle Zar's Grand Adventure. If you don't know what that is, stick around to the end of the video and I'll explain it. And I get an email, you know, Kyle Zar's, my Gmail account. I get an email and it says, this is James Frey's assistant. He wants to talk to you. Is there a good number where he can reach you at? And I read it and I thought about it and I read it again. And I emailed him back and I said, what's the nature of the call? And sure enough, three minutes later, I get an email and it says, I don't know, he just said to contact you. I think he saw some of your videos on YouTube. And I thought about that for a second and I thought, what is going on? So I gave him my number and I said, okay. And 10 minutes later, he says, he's going to call you in five minutes. Do you have 20 minutes to talk? And I emailed him back and said, yeah, go ahead. And sure enough, I get a call and he says, hi, this is James Frey. Um, if you don't know who that is, um, A Million Little Pieces, James Frey, the big Oprah controversy, James Frey, my brother Leonard, uh, the Endgame books, the three Endgame books that had a treasure hunt in them. I actually did a vlog on those. So I thought, yeah, I guess it's possible he could have saw one of my videos because I actually talk about his Endgame books. And he's on the phone and he says, I saw your videos. I think they're well done. I think you put out some good information. And the reason I'm calling you is that I'm doing a Forest Fen project. Uh, it's about the searchers for the Forest Fen treasure hunt. And he said, uh, there'll be details on that coming out later. But he said, the, that the important part is that he said, he sat down with Forest Fen for it, over two days for an interview, uh, January 30th and 31st. And he wanted to tell me to put in the vlog to all of you some of the things that Forrest Fenn talked about. And I was just blown away. I, you know, I'm on the phone going, okay, you know, what, what, what am I going to say? Thanks? <laughs> so I ended up talking to James Frey on the phone for two hours last night. And uh, the nicest guy, I know the controversy with him. I know what some people think of him. I don't have anything, I'm not going to comment on that aspect of things. All I can say is somebody that uh, posts about Taco Bell as much as he does is okay with me. Um, and yeah, we had a conversation for two hours about the Forest Fen uh, treasure hunt. And uh, these are some of the things he wanted me to put in the vlog. So he talked to Forest Fen for the two days. Um, he said that Forrest told him like three different times. People figure out the first two clues or... or People think they figure out the first two clues. They get a War Warm Waters Halt. They get a Home of Brown. And then they take the map and they take the book and the poem and they go out there and they look for the rest of the clues. And Forrest said you can't find it that way. He said you have to know where you're going. The, the searcher will be confident that goes and finds a treasure chest. He made it sound, and this is James Frey, remember, he made it sound that Forrest was implying that you should be able to solve all nine clues in the poem and know where the treasure chest is before you ever leave your house. Now this is a bombshell, right? This is brand new because this is not what I've heard Forrest say before. Um, yeah, most people go out there and they just have no clue because they haven't solved all the, the clues in the poem first. Um, he asked them why hasn't it been found? It's been what, 2010? It's been seven years? And he said, people are not following the clues in the poem. And Forrest did say a bunch of times, it's supposed to be fun. Don't get obsessed over it. It's supposed to be fun. The thrill of the chase, get out in nature. We know that. We've heard that from him before. Um, but he said, people are overthinking it. Hints are in the book that will help you with the poem. And he did say you need the book and the poem together to figure out what those clues are in the poem. I'm just, I'm just relaying to you what I was told by James Frey. Um, he said, all you need is the poem in the book if you study thoroughly. He wants someone to find it. His gut feeling is somebody will find it this year because there's so many people that are involved in the chase now. The, the three deaths, unfortunately, the three deaths got so much publicity that more people are involved, more people know about it. And he really hopes that somebody finds it this summer. And this is new too. Forrest has always said he's ambivalent about it, right? He said, you know, he, he, he did what he did. He wrote the book, the poem. He hit it. And now if somebody finds it, he finds it. But Forrest said he really wants somebody to find it and that he will rejoice with them. He said he's had a bottle of champagne in his refrigerator for the last eight years waiting for somebody to find the treasure chest. Um, this is interesting. He, uh, James 
asked him, how are you going to know if somebody finds a treasure chest? What if somebody finds it, takes it, and never tells a, a soul, anybody? And it, listen, very important. Forrest said, there's a message in the chest that will force the finder to contact Forrest Fenn. There's a note, there's, he used the word message, so whatever that means. There's a message in that treasure chest that will make the finder contact Forrest Fenn when he finds it. Forrest said, without a doubt, that person will um, contact him. Whoever finds that chest will contact him. Makes sense though, right? A lot of people, oh, there's a, there's a trail cam on the chest. There's a GPS tracker. There's all these things. Wouldn't it be just that simple if Forrest left a note that says, you know, we know his autobiography is in the olive jar, right? Well, what if there's another note in another olive jar or somehow a message in the chest that, that just says, hey, you know, would it be money? I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to guess and speculate what the message is. But I think it's interesting that Forrest said there is a message that will force the person who finds it to contact him. The title? Title to the gold? I don't know. And the thing I keep going back to that's crazy is if you put the clues together, it will take you right to it. He said that Forrest said nobody can accidentally find the treasure chest. Nobody can stumble upon it. He said you have to know right where it is in order to find it. And my way of thinking is that it's concealed in such a way that it could be right there. And unless I know what the blaze is and I'm looking for it, I can walk right by it or right over it. He said no, no tools are needed, not a shovel, nothing else. So it's not buried in the traditional sense. It's just hidden. And Forrest has always said that, right? He, he didn't, didn't want to say he buried it. He said he hid it. Um, I'm still, you know... I still can't believe that, that I talked to James Frey for two hours last night about Forrest Fenn, of all things. Um, so those were the main points, and he just said he just wanted to stress, this is James Frey, he just wanted to stress that Forrest kept saying, have fun, it's about getting out you know, in the wilderness and having fun. Be careful of all the dangers that are out there, but don't let that prevent you from having fun. Um, and the most important thing, if you put the clues together, you'll walk right to it. And that just makes it sound to me as if the, the, all the clues are solvable from the poem and the book and, Google, and the good map, you know, Google Earth or, or Google Maps, that you should know right where it is. And, you know, we've always said, if you've been wise and found the blaze, been wise, that you already know what the blaze is before you head out. Wouldn't that be something? If you already know where it is. Because Forrest has said, uh, the person who finds it will walk with confidence. He'll go right to it and get it. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, oh, and then there's one other thing. The person I talked to, they were not James Frey. <laughs> I, this person, I, it's just so bizarre. I'm still trying to process what happened here. I don't, I, I'm fairly 99% sure this person was not James Frey. Why they pretended to be James Frey, I don't know. All, all the information I just gave you is what they told me to put in the vlog, and I did, so maybe they got what they wanted, but it's not James Frey. Why would this person, I just can't understand why they would pretend to be James Frey. Out of all the people they could pretend to be, or all the different ways they could want me to put something in the vlog, why would they pretend to be James Frey? I don't know, it's so crazy, it's almost believable. Um, we talked about a million little pieces, and we talked about Oprah and how people hate him, and, and how he's almost never recovered. We talked about Endgame, the puzzles, and we just talked about all this stuff, and the whole time the person is saying they're James Frey. But, but it's not James Frey. Come on. I mean, think about it. Um, I just don't know who it was. There was a real phone call. This isn't a joke. This isn't a uh, letter in the mail from, from last April. I did get a phone call. I talked to this person for two hours. They said they were James Frey. They talked to another person they were with like it was their assistant, Stephen, who emailed me. But I just don't see how it could have been James Frey. He said he was going to autograph his books and send them to me. So we'll see. And I gave him my address, the, the address uh, that people send me mail to. So it'll be interesting if I actually get books in the mail or not. But whoever I talk to on the phone, call me back. You got my phone number. I got your phone number. I could call you, but I'm not going to. Call me back and just tell me why you pretended to be James Frey. I, I mean, I think it's a cool, it's a clever, you know, joke. 
Um, this is up there with the mysterious package company that I got in the mail. You know, that weird uh, box I got with all the weird stuff in it. I still don't know who sent that. Um, this is up there with that one, though. This is pretty good. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was just at a loss for words. Um, they pretended to be James Frey. I kind of fell for it in the beginning, I'll be honest, in the beginning of a phone call. But whenever I mentioned Endgame, they would just go quiet. So it's almost like they didn't know anything about Endgame. They didn't want to talk about Endgame because they didn't read know any of the puzzles. Like, I guess I could have quizzed them to make sure it was really him. But, uh, yeah. James Frey watched the vlog and called me. No, I don't think so. So, <laughs> it's just fun. I, I just wanted to tell you guys. Sorry if anybody's pissed off because they thought, they thought what I was saying was actually from Forrest. It wasn't. It's from this person who called me. So... Um, if you got anything you want me to put in the vlog, there's an email address down below. There's a, uh, yeah, an address where you can send some mail. Like the video, share the video, comment on the video. Oh, and Kalazar's Grand Adventures. I'm giving away six, actually I take that back. I'm giving away seven treasure hunting books, including the forest, the new forest fan Once Upon a While. Too Far to Walk, The Thrill of the Chase, all these books. Seven lucky people are going to get these books. And the way I'm going to do that is there's something called Kalazar's Grand Adventure 2. I'm going to design, and I'm in the process of designing, a series of puzzles. These puzzles, the first seven, the first six people who correctly solve the puzzles get to choose a book. Somebody emailed me and said, well, what if I'm not good at puzzles? I want to I wanna participate. I want a Forrest Fenn book, but what if I'm not good at puzzles? I don't have a shot. So what I'm going to do is after the six correct winners, and that goes by date and time of their email, the first six people who correctly solve the grand puzzle in Kalazar's Grand Adventure, they get their choice of a book. After those six winners are selected, I'm going to pick a date and time after that. And I will randomly pick all the participants of the Grand Adventure. And that person gets to pick any book they want. So even if you're not good at puzzles, you still have a shot. You know, I don't expect hundreds and hundreds of people to get in this thing. So I think your chance of getting a free book is pretty good. Randomly. I'll do that. It'll be a live YouTube uh, video where everybody will see the entrance and you'll see who wins. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun designing the puzzles. Um, I got a couple surprises in store. Anybody who did Kalazar's Grand Adventure, the first one, and there were only, you know, 20 people or so that did it because I did it in a hidden certain way in my Do You Like Puzzles video. Um, there will be no vlog questions in this one. And that one at the end I asked questions about my vlog, so if you hadn't watched them you wouldn't have known the answers. No questions like that. These are all straight up puzzles. I got a couple surprises in store for everybody. I think you're going to enjoy it. I have decided the price of Kalazar's Grand Adventure is going to be $5, payable via PayPal. Uh, it just helps me cover the cost of buying these books and then shipping them to you wherever you're at. Um, it is going to be in March. I don't have an exact date yet, but there'll be a video with all the details before it starts so everybody's on the same page. And if you're good at puzzles, maybe you're better and can beat my puzzles. So that's it, everybody. Um, James Frey, on the 1% chance that that was you, call me back, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, still don't know what to make of that phone call. Pretty interesting stuff. Pretty funny stuff. If you like this video, click the thumbs up. Subscribe so you can be alerted when the Kalazar's Grand Adventure is going to start. There's a Facebook group, Kalazar's Grand Adventure. I put the link down below. You can get details there. You do not have to join that group in order to participate in the puzzles for the books. Share the video. There's an email and mail down there. If you've got something you want me to put in a vlog, let me know. You know me, I'm Mr. Skeptical. Anybody who knows me, especially with Solutions of Forest Fens Treasure, I'm a very skeptical person. So as soon as I got off the phone with James Frey, I got right on the computer and emailed Forrest. Forrest, I just talked to James Frey. He said he did a two-day interview with you. Forrest emails me back this morning. I have no memory of such interview. So, nice try, whoever it was. Um, it was still fun, still interesting, but nice try. Better luck next time.